Hello again everybody and welcome to my unboxing video of the Kickstarter versions of Brass Lancashire and Brass Birmingham. So before we begin I'm just uh, going to let you know that I ordered these directly from Roxley Games and this is after the Kickstarter uh, has finished. I've ordered the bundle um, of both deluxe games. I've not any uh, ordered any extra iron clays. Um, at the moment, these games are available in most regions, um, although I don't know what the quantities um, are like at the moment. So um, it might be an idea to order your copy soon um, if you're, you know, if you, if you like the look of these um, following the video. Um, but yeah, um, I think it's quite a good deal. Um, still, even now that the Kickstarter's finished, I think the prices are quite reasonable. Um, we'll get to that. But first of all, I'm going to bring the box up and I'll show you how it all comes. Okay, so I ordered mine here to the UK. So it was prepared in America. Here's the box here. I probably should have covered the address. Um, so you can see here it comes in a really big cardboard box containing both games. I've got a handy little pair of scissors here. So I'm just going to cut off these uh, plastic binders that kind of hold the box together. And then I should be able to just cut the sellotape at the side. Okay. And I should be able to get into the box now. So now it's going to be difficult for you to see everything in shot. Um, I've got the camera um, as far away from the box as I really can at the moment. This is going to get in the way of the microphone as well, so I'm just going to have to tilt it a wee bit and then tilt it back. So let's be unfolded the top of the box. And again, there's another fold here. Again, this is going to get in the way of the camera. And again, I'm going to have to move this microphone around. It's not really ideal. Um, so there we go, and um, so you can see we've got some brown uh, packing paper. I'll take this off, and right at the top we have the big cardboard box for Brass Lancashire Deluxe. So it tells us exactly what it contains. There's Roxley Games here. There's a logo, Deluxe English, um, and it contains copies of Brass Lancashire Deluxe. This is made in China. And quantity two copies. Okay. Uh, I don't know why it says that, because I actually have uh, a copy of each game, I believe. So, we're now going to flip the box up. This might be quite hard to see. I'll flip the box over. It's quite heavy. I'll actually see that it contains two individual boxes here. It's difficult to see. Uh, within this big box. So, it's a box within a box, and then there's two boxes within this box. So lots of boxes, so they can see very well protected, which they would need to do for overseas shipping. Because um, obviously this one was shipped overseas, so it needs to be adequately packaged so that it will survive the voyage. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to lift this out, okay? So I'm just going to lift this out completely, and I'm going to put this big box to the side, because really, it's no surplus to requirements, we don't need that. And that will make it a lot easier to show you what's going on here. Okay. So, let move this mic back as well, a wee bit. So, yes, as uh, so you can see here, this is the, let's back into the shot, the two boxes here, uh, they're packed in nice and tight, so I'm going to flip this over, and I should be able to slide these out, hopefully. Okay, so it's on, sure. Yeah. Ah, okay. Right, so it seems that they just put that general Lancashire thing on the box that stores both. Because we now have the two individual boxes. Okay, so again, really well packaged. So first of all, we've got Brass Lancashire. I'm not going to go over this again, really, because it's really just the same as what we've seen before. So I'll set that to the side. But we also have, in this kind of fetching black background here, this is Brass Birmingham. So, now, um, a wee bit about the Brass games before we begin the full unboxing. So, Brass Lancashire, over here, um, is quite an old game. It's a, an older Martin Wallace game, and um, it's been available for some time, and Roxy Games have basically uh, came along and reprinted it, and they've updated the art. And I think the, the, the rules have been streamlined very slightly, um, but other than that, it's pretty much the same game. Um, and, you know, it's a solid... Uh, economic Euro game, you know, it's in BGG's top 100s, 
Um, so, you know, well renowned, great designer, solid game. But we also have Brass Birmingham. So, Brass Birmingham is, is a very similar game. It could be seen um, as a sequel of sorts to the original Blast Lancashire. And it has been designed in conjunction with Martin Wallace, the original designer. Um, but there's also another one or two designers that have helped create this game. So, um, there are a few changes. Um, it is its own game, but it is very similar to uh, Lancashire in a lot of respects. I think it's a, it's a kind of more meaty version of the game. There's a wee bit more to think about um, and a few different mechanics. But what we're, we're more interested in unboxing. So this isn't a review, it isn't a playthrough, and those might come later. This is simply just an unboxing video and just, you know, to give you a wee idea of, you know, what the games are and what they look like, you know, opened and what they're all about. So, we're going to start with Brass Lancashire. So I'm just going to cut this open. So I've got some sellotape here going along the side. I'll cut that bit open and then I'll just cut this here. Um, I would quite like to preserve the boxes here if I can because they are really quite nice. Um, and there you go, that'll pull open easy enough. And should be able to get the actual game out. So there we go. So you can see here, Brass Lancashire. Um, yep, there you are, just put the box in shot. You have to watch it for the glare there, because of the way I'm recording. You can see, um, beautiful box. Um, lovely art, brass, like in gold, Martin Wallace down there in gold. Um, I'm just going to take off the film covering, um, which hopefully should reduce the glare as well. <coughs> I realise that this is maybe not the best recording setup. Um, I'm using a lot of natural light through the window, <coughs> but obviously that gives you the potential for glare as well. So it's not not brilliant, right? So hopefully this won't the glare won't be as bad now. Uh, no, it's still quite bad. It's just a different type of glare. It's more more a kind of matte glare as a gloss as opposed to a glossy glare. But as you can see, that is the um, uh, box cover there. Really, really good box art. So I'm just gonna pop this open. So it should just lift open now, and I'll just put the box lid to the side. So first thing we've got here is the manual. Um, I I, th I don't think the original manual is particularly bad, but I've heard this updated one is definitely an improvement. As you can see here, we've got a list of all the components. Um, it explains a wee bit about the game based on the Industrial Revolution. It links you to some video and uh, digital tutorials. Um, and there's a credits there. So Martin Wallace uh, was the main designer for this one. Um, you also get a wee bit of background for the historical figures um, here. Uh, in fact, one of them, I believe, yeah, this gentleman over here, um, Robert Owen, um, so he actually, so he um, lived in, a, it was a, basically an industrial village called New Lanark and that is actually very close to where I, um, where I, I lived from a younger age. So when I was very young my, my parents moved to the town of Lanark, um, which is next to New Lanark, which is the new, so it was, a town, it was an actual village that was built during the Industrial Revolution um, and Robert Owen was a kind of key figure. Um, you know, uh, within that, I think he's um, he was he, he organised um, schools. So for a lot of the the children that were working in the looms, um, he basically made sure that they had schooling as well. So um, yeah, so yeah, it's, it's definitely worth visiting. If you're ever up in in, in these parts, then I suggest you go and visit New Lanark because it's it's really it's beautiful. Um, so I just have a wee look at the board set up here. So big, nice big. Uh, Diagram of the board, where everything goes. You'll see here that the money, a bit harder to see, you've got kind of coins there. If you've got the deluxe edition for these coins over here, then you will have uh, the, the iron clays, which are basically like big poker chips. But you can see there it, it explains everything uh, nice and clearly. It's you know all the different bits are labelled with letters and colour coded as well. So that should help you uh, learn the game. Playing the game gives you the goal. That's always a good start. Rounds, player turn. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time going through the manual, but I will say it does look like a really solid manual um, here. You know, so very, very colourful. Lots of diagrams. Um, looks quite easy to read and really easy to follow. 
beginner tips at the back, things to remember. So, you know, we, we things like we niggly rules that people forget about. It's always good to have that, you know. Um, so, yeah, there's also a two-player variant, which I don't think was in the original brass. Uh, I think one of the, the weaknesses was it didn't play as well at that, that player count. Um, so they've tried to account for that with this new variant here. Okay, anyway, that's the manual there, so we'll just go and pop that in the box. Uh, I'm just going to have a wee look at the board, um, which we did see in the, the manual. Um, so you can see here, here's the board. It might be difficult to get this all in shot and to avoid the glare. Yep, so you can see there, it, now it's a nice thick mounted board. And again, a beautiful, yeah. Um, it's got this kind of, you know, it looks very, you know, I think it's, if looking at the board, it's quite, not muted. It do, I mean, it does, you know, it's quite colourful, it does pop, but the colours blend together very nicely, yeah. So it's almost, almost a bit like a kind of painting kind of thing they've got going on in the background here. So yeah, like an oil painting kind of thing. I really like that, that look. Uh, here we have got the tokens, little boards here. There are there should be one of these for each player, four different colours. That's basically your starting tiles um, and your little canal and rail connectors, and then a character. Um, something. I believe that um, the, the there's two characters on each disc. You can flip them. There are some female characters you can play, so it's nice to have that option as well. It's always good to see them try and be a wee bit more inclusive in the, the modern games. These are the player boards, so each one of the players will get one of these, and this is basically used to store all your development tiles that you're going to put out over the course of the game. Now, I believe that in the deluxe version, these are thicker, so these are printed on thicker cardboard. In the retail version, they're a bit thinner. These are really, I mean, look at this, really, really thick cardboard here. So, I will say, if you're getting the retail version, I wouldn't worry too much. I still think it will be really good quality. I think this is just a wee bit thicker. You know, um, so yeah. Sometimes if I get a game and the the player boards are quite flimsy, I'll laminate them. Uh, usually with a, a mat uh, laminating pouch, because um, I find that helps protect them and it, it makes them just a wee bit more solid and um, stops them, you know, warping as much. But for this, there's there's no way I could laminate this because it's so thick. So that's great. Okay, I'll just pull off the wee protector here, and you can see there's just a few more things in the box. We get a few baggies to use for the components, and um, I don't know how many we'll need to use to be honest because it does look like we've got an actual proper insert. In the centre here, oh my god, these weigh, weigh quite a bit. We have the iron clays. So these, this, this is basically used to track money in the game. I'll just show you them there. And they're, they're basically poker chips. They're like very high quality poker chips. Um, so this is what, this here is two, four, six, eight. That's eight there, and these feel really weighty. I mean, like, proper solid poker chips. Nice little uh, pattern design on them as well. You probably can't see that because of the glare. Yep. So the denominations, you get ones, you get fives, and you get tens. So the, there's your fives and your tens as well. Okay, and they sit in a wee tray here. So um, if you're playing the game, you can just have them sitting in a wee tray. And, you know, it's quite easy for someone to maybe be the banker and just pass them out over the, the course of the game. Okay, just have a wee look at the, the tokens. Um, so here we've got uh, the little cubes here. So we've got black and orange cubes. These uh, denote the coal and the iron uh, that's used in the game, the resources um, that you put on your developments. That's pretty straightforward. We've got markers here for players in four different colours. Um, I think we've got a marker there for tracking the cotton as well, the distant market. And we've got some more coloured markers here for players. So not a lot there. Finally, we've got a deck of cards. The game is card driven, um, so the cards are very important. I'll try and pop these open. And thankfully, this is one of the uh, ones that's much easier to open. Sometimes these are really tricky. So, really nice finish in these cards. I think it's a nice linen finish. You can see there, again, try to avoid the glare. But yeah, really good quality. Uh, the art's lovely. It's the front, that's the back there. Yep, and so these are basically different um, locations, and there's also different industries as well. So those were locations. There's Liverpool there, all you know ones that are on the map. So these are all locations. And they're different colours as well. And here are our industries. So I believe that's the ironworks there. 
you know, the big smelting pot. Um, and you also have the coal, a very important resource in the game. Again, so you've got a couple of gentlemen there, just with a wee coal cart. Lovely. Uh, and also you have here, I believe that's a cotton. And it's and then this particular image is being shipped out, you know, to the distant market, presumably. So that's your cotton, I think. Yeah. Oh no, it's a shipping town. It says, yes, yeah, actually, it's for building a shipyard, which would make sense. Um, and then here, sorry, this is your cotton. So apologies to the cotton. So that's them working there, I think, on the looms. So it's all, all very thematic, you know, all the cards make sense, you know, within the context of the game. In fact, there's another there's another design for the cotton as well. So there's a couple of designs there for that industry, which is nice. Um, so yeah. Also, you get some reference cards. So here uh, you can see on this you've got the game round actions, end of canal, end of rail era, the two halves of the game, and then on back of the uh, card there you've got a card distribution for the different player counts. So for two, three, and four. Um, yep tells you there how many cards to include in the deck and there are four of those obviously one for each player okay uh, you can see here the, the insert nice orange colour uh, now these cards as well just before I put them away these are uh, your standard playing cards so they'd be the same size as magic cards you know magic the gathering playing cards so if you want to sleeve them um, then it's quite an easy size to get as well and I believe they've designed the insert so that it will take sleeve cards so they will fit in the box because you've actually got two slots for them here you've still got plenty of room everywhere else excellent so really really good work with that that is um, yeah oh also one last thing as before I put this one away I forgot to to say that the board I believe is double sided yeah. So again, I'm just going to pop this open, and I think one side here. I don't know if that, if you can see at a glance, they look any different. One side here. Um, I think it's for two and three players, and I think there is a another side that's for other player counts. Yeah. I would need to look that up, but I'm pretty sure that is the case. But it's definitely double-sided, as you can see. It's printed on both sides. Okay, so that was Brass Lancashire. So again, that is the older design from Martin Wallace. With a few changes. Um, the mechanics, a new added variant, and a, a nice new coat of paint. So, and as you can see, it looks, looks absolutely stunning. So a really, really good job. Hats off to Roxley for this production, because uh, uh, it, it really is fantastic. I believe these might sit in here like that. Yeah, that makes more sense. Okay, so I will pop these out and take care of this later. So they should, should sit flush once I've popped those boards and tucked the tokens away. Okay, so that was Brass Lancashire. Okay, we are now I'm going to move on and we are going to look at Brass Birmingham. So this is the newer one. Yep. This is the 2018, I think, Brass Birmingham. And it is very similar to Lancashire, but with, you know, a few different mechanics and, yeah, we'll get, we'll get, we'll get it. Okay, so here we go. So again, I'm just going to pop the box to the side because we're now done with that. Uh, as you can see, it's a nice, a slightly different uh, box art. Um, it's we've got a kind of lighter look to this one. So that's the kind of the, the kind of paved stones there, and you've got like an iron wheel and a hammer. You know, so it does give you that kind of feeling of you know your industry, you know, and the you know, industrial revolution. So really, really nice box art. And again, brass, bronze, and gold. This time, however. But we have Martin Wallace in the middle again. But we also have Matt Tolman, and we have a uh, is it Gavin Brown? Interesting spelling of Gavin. It's G A V A N. So these two gentlemen here, I presume they're gentlemen, um, uh, helped co-design this with Martin Wallace. Okay, so they had a hand in bringing this to life. So again, I'm just going to pop off the cling film. That should reduce a bit of the glare. 
I'll have another quick look at the box. Okay. And then we can open her up and see what what lies within. Okay. So again, that is the box there. I'm just going to fire this to the side. Shouldn't be as bad for the glare now. You should be able to get some good shots of it. Brilliant. Okay. Um, uh, also, I should have said at the time, on the side of the box here, it tells you the player counts. Again, this is 2 to 4, 60 to 120 minutes, which I, I don't, I think that's been quite optimistic to be honest, that is quite a long game. 14 plus. Uh, I think you could, I think younger, um, you know, children probably could play this, but, you know, there, it's quite involved. So, uh, you know, that's not to say that younger, it's not for younger players, but, you know, they would need to be, they would, they would have needed to play some board games before this. This is definitely not a gateway game. Neither of these are gateway games. Okay, so again, the first thing we see, not the manual this time, we've got the punch boards. Very similar to uh, the Lancashire. The difference is the industries um, are slightly different. We've got, um, I don't think this is cotton actually. It is, is it manufactured goods? I, I, don't, I'm not even, I don't even know. Maybe it is cotton. Uh, we've got ironworks, we've got coal, we've got beer here, breweries. That's one feature of the game. We've got pottery. And we have what's called manufactured goods here. Again, <laughs> excuse me. Again, we've got our character uh, portraits, and we have our uh, canal and rail connectors as well. So that's so it's quite similar to um, Lancashire in most regards, but the industries are slightly different. Here we have the manual again, okay, and you can see it's quite consistent with the first manual. Again, industrial revolution, video, uh, digital tutorials, credits. Um, a wee picture of all the components, all labelled, so you know what should be within the game. Turn to the page. Again, it's just the kind of key figures from the period. Um, as I said before, there you can play as there's a couple of women there. There's Eliza Tinsley and Eleanor, I think it's Code, yeah, um, that you can play as as well. So these these eight you know figures um, were you know kind of key to the Industrial Revolution. Okay, so again, they're concluded there for reference because you mean obviously you might not buy both games. Board setup, um, okay, you can see again very similar. We've got a big diagram there uh, of the board, everything labelled, you know, with um, <clears throat> letters. I'm not going to spend a lot of time in that because we've seen that before. Actions list, end of round, player turns, consuming coal, iron, beer. So beer's new. So section is new to this game. The building actions. Selling actions, loan actions. Things to remember, beginner's tips at the back again. An introductory game. So there's a variant there, I think, for playing your first game. Which is good, because this one is a wee bit more advanced. Okay. So, there you go. That's the manual. Again, very similar to the, the one for Lancashire. Which is great, because I, I think they are you know, really good designs, both of them. Okay, now the board. Okay, now, again, this is quite interesting. The board is double-sided. Okay. But I think you use the same side for all player counts. So you'll see on this side here, we've got a dark theme. So it's like night time, you know, all the industries at night. You can see the little um, houses, they've got lights in the windows, yeah. So it's all, I mean, again, it looks beautiful. Kind of oil painting look, consistent with the last one. Um, you know, lovely. We flip it and we get the daytime map, which looks a lot more similar to the map that you get in uh, Lancashire. So you've got a Lancashire version, it's a different map because it's Birmingham, not Lancashire, but it's the same style, but you also have a nighttime variant as well. So you've got a wee bit of variety there, so you know you can just play in whatever side you like the look of. So yeah, again, mounted boards, nice and thick, really good quality, nice finish, really happy with that. Again, player boards, I'm not going to spend a lot of time in those, but those hold your industry tiles, much like they did um, in Lancashire. You'll see now we've got another insert. This insert is blue, as opposed to orange. So it's a nice kind of, you know, it's a, a kind of darker, more muted colour. Um, again, we should have our iron clays. These will be identical, I think, yeah, to the ones in uh, Lancashire. You can buy these separately as well. You can actually buy these 
Um, and they come in a little, a little box as well. I think there's a little wooden box that looks great. And the reason you might want to do that is because it can be used as money in loads of other games. So I'm quite happy with just a set for these two games. Um, I don't feel that I need another set because I do have a set of poker chips um, which are good enough quality and I do use them for certain games. Um, any game that uses lots of money and has paper money within the game, for example Power Grid, um, poker chips are great. You know, they really do speed th things up and they make it a lot easier to manage money. So I think poker chips are great, um, love them, but I, I've already got a set. So for other games, I'm quite happy to use that. But these are really nice to have for these games. Uh, again, you just get bits of cardboard, plug them away. More baggies, don't know how many of these I'll use, but they're there. And again, player markers and your four different colours. That's them there. You've got... Here you've got your uh, coal and your iron, that's still the same, however you also have your beer, which are these big uh, cylindrical tokens that look like beer bar barrels, like wooden beer barrels, really cool, you know, so that's really nice and thematic, good quality. And finally, we have the cards, again, should be quite easy to open. Okay, so just pop them open and you'll see again very same finish nice linen finish good quality cardstock silver um, uh, design in the back as opposed to the gold from the last one you've got your different locations all at the top and then you should move on to your different industries and in this game the industries are different but some of them are you've got coal there you've got your ironworks You've got manufactured goods and cotton, so I think these do both, potentially. You have your beer, so you've got your big kind of brewing vats there. Brilliant. And then you get to cut designs for beer. And you also have pottery, which I think is a very expensive resource to, to produce, but it's really, really valuable. And I'm not sure what these ones are here. I think they're wilds, actually. There are some wild cards in this one. And again, right at the back, you have your player aids. With what happens, game game round, actions that you have, end of the canal era, end of the rail era, and on the back, you're uh, basically setting up the decks for different player counts, what cards to include. So again, nice to have. It's always good to have some reference cards. So yeah, um, that's pretty much it, really. Um, you can see great productions, consistent. You know, I'm really, really looking forward to playing these. I think I probably will start with Lancashire. And then I'll maybe try for a game of Birmingham in the future. Um, it makes start to play um, the, the kind of easier one first. I've played a bit of the app. I've never played the older version of Brass or this version. Um, so as I said, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, before closing off, uh, the only thing I really was going to say was the price point for these games. Now, if you got in on the Kickstarter early, and you, well, you're probably not watching this video if you did, but um, you would have got the reduced price and you would have got a really good deal for the games, especially if you bought both. Now, you can still buy the bundle, both games, with the, the deluxe versions, with the, you know, the iron clays and the slightly thicker cardboard, slightly better quality components. You can buy them both directly from uh, Roxley as a late pledge. I paid about 180 uh, Canadian dollars. In my country, that is the equivalent of 108 pounds. Okay, and that was for both games. That included the shipping, and it also included the customs charges, which they they will they will they will cover those for you. I had a look online to get both retail versions of the game. You're looking at the moment at about 94 pounds to buy both. So for an extra 14 pounds you can get deluxe editions of both games now to me that's probably worth it if you want both games um and it, it might not work out the same in your country but here it made sense to go for the deluxe and um, for, for directly from roxley that extra 14 pounds that's seven pounds each game to upgrade it you know with the iron clays and the upgraded components uh, um and that's not to say that the retail version isn't good. The retail version is still great quality. Um, but if you want both games, I think it makes sense, you know, to spend that extra um, and go for the deluxe. Uh, it took about, I 
think it took about maybe a week for them to prepare it and then about but maybe four or five days for it to be delivered from, uh, I think it was from, the, they eventually sent it from Germany, I believe. So they must have a distribution network there. Um, yeah, and it arrived, as I said, really well packaged, you know. And yeah, I'm really, really happy with it. So hopefully that's been um, insightful. Um, and hopefully you've enjoyed the video. As I said, um, at some point in the future I might do some uh, playthroughs or how to plays with games. At the moment, I just thought it'd be easy to test the setup doing some unboxings and kind of get a feel for things. I'm also using the external mic today. It seems to have recorded properly, so I'm hoping that the audio quality will be quite good for you. Um, so yeah, so again, like, share, uh, subscribe if you're interested. Thanks for watching and have a great day.